Thank you very much indeed, Kwala. And now I'd like to invite the Mayor of Camden, Councillor Lorraine Reva, to come and uh, speak to us to start off the speaking side of this problem. Thank you. I'm very pleased to join you here today at this Cherry Tree planted by the Mayor, Councillor Millie Miller, in 1967 to remember the victims of nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. We should all reflect on the lessons learned from Hiroshima, in particular how the people of Japan and Hiroshima reacted and dealt with the bombings and their safety. Together we can build a society which is peaceful, welcoming and forgiving. The lesson learned from Hiroshima and Nakasaki bombing should be that the way to deal with hatred is never through violence. Camden Council will continue to work with our community and faith leaders in Camden to achieve this aim of greater tolerance, understanding and cohesion. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mayor Ress. Thank you very much indeed, Mayor, for coming along. I must say we've had the most wonderful welcome year after year from Camden. They've been enormously helpful over the years with this ceremony on the 6th of August. So can we give Camden a clap in your honour for what they've done? Hard times coming home now. You can't keep your feet on the ground. You've got some issues, and no one wants you around. You're barely sleeping, and you can't get through to the VA on the phone. No one is hiring, and no one wants to give you a loan. And everyone else is carrying on just like they always did before. You've been home for a couple of years now, buddy. You're still fighting the war. Flashback to Fallujah. You lost another best friend. Three tours of duty and you wonder when it's all going to end. You're barely sleeping. Your bones are shattered and your bones are broken. There's blood and dust in your mouth <laughs> You're getting weary but you're running with a few on the brown Sometimes you wonder why you went You never wondered what you stayed home for You've been home for a couple of years now buddy You're still fighting the war Uh, accounts from people, including one person who was uh, responsible partly in an aeroplane bombing Hamburg and looking down at the firestorm and, and he, he said, I knew I was going to hell. After I did that, I knew I was going to hell while doing my duty and what I was told was to. So this is a fictional person uh, kind of thinking about that kind of mass bombing. Walk anywhere and you'll catch yourself calculating out from where the first cookie to the large bomb would fall and blast the buildings open. Let the incendiaries in to lodge and play. Difficult to pick where you should live. Too near a bridge and you've had it. Too near a railway junction. Too near a railway station. Too near a factory. Too near a harbour. An airfield. A prison. A port. A tunnel. A dam. A power plant. A refinery. A river. A road. A canal. A forest. A mountain. Your neighbour who's dead already and his house on fire. Wooden floors and wooden roof beams. They'd mean you would be lost. Your attic blazing down at you as soon as the tiles were off. Narrow streets and the flame would jump, would feed, would eat your shadows. Your stores of coal and petrol, your broken gas mains, they would burn and serve your enemies, the ones who were trying to kill you. Books and papers would forget themselves and turn to fuel. 
just like your furniture, your pets, your clothes, your hair. And so you see targets beside targets, nothing but targets and ghost craters looping up from the earth, shock waves of dust and smoke ringing, crossing. You feel the aerial photograph staring down at you where you stand, waiting to wipe you away. You always are a target under naked air. And sometimes you dream of the man on the bombs and the targets all learning from each other, testing and perfecting, changing, except they really stay the same, are built around numbers and burning, which is to say around death. But you don't talk about death. You only ever say you have knowledge of the working of bombs. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the sun has come out more or less, and so has Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, but I'm just letting him hold his, get his breath for a minute. And I'd like to ask Sheila Oakes of Wilf, the Women's International League of Peace and Freedom, a long time peace campaigner, to come and take them out. Wherever you are, Sheila, you're welcome. Please come forward. the United States exploded the first atomic war in war, bomb in war. We remember the tens of thousands of people who were vaporized in seconds and those who suffered appalling burns and radiation which would scar them for the rest of their lives and lead them to an early death. Thirty years earlier and now 100 years ago, vast numbers of men died, were maimed, and mentally scarred for life in the trenches of the First World War. And here, from the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, well, to remind us that 100 years ago, in 1915, there were women who stood up against the jingoism of king and country to oppose the violence of war. Women from 12 countries who travelled in wartime to The Hague in neutral Netherlands to discuss with other women the root causes of war. They called for continuous mediation to bring about a just peace and took their proposals for what we might now call negotiated settlement to lead us in 14 countries across Europe and North America. No one would give up a perceived war advantage to initiate peace negotiations, as we know, because the war continued. In 1915, in 1945, in 2015, there is no situation for which violence and war is the answer. We maintain that the creation and storing of nuclear weapons is illegal, immoral, and costs so much it is sheer nonsense to keep them. To Today's weapons dwarf the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and would create much wider and deeper humanitarian effects so will, as part of civil society, along with CND, plays an active part in the ICANN network of organizations working to ban all nuclear weapons. In 2015, after 100 years, will is still relevant and needed, working as women to hold those with power to account. Sheila, you were warmly received and quite rightly too after the work of, of Wilf for so many years. 
perhaps I should also mention the women of Greenham Common who did so much for us as well at the same time. And now Godot has actually arrived, amazingly, and he's going to talk to us. You probably know Jan Corbyn. He is quite active and he's only here really because in the coming election, which you probably heard about, there's only one of four candidates who unconditionally, without hesitation, no qualifications, is totally opposed to nuclear weapons. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting me to speak today and to everyone that's here today. We're standing in the shadow of the tree planted by the late wonderful Millie Miller in 1967 who devoted her life to campaigning against nuclear weapons. And we stand in the shadow of many of those that have spent their whole lives campaigning for peace and justice and trying to open the eyes of the rest of the world to the advantages and the possibilities of peace. I want to say a big thank you to Councillor Lorraine River from Camden for being here today and my good friend, Councillor Richard Greening, and the Mayoress of Islington, Patsy Bradbury, for being here today. Two boroughs united for peace. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Amongst those who have spent their lives campaigning for peace, Gandhi's statue nearby, those people that dared to dream of peace, they're the ones who we remember. They're the ones that give us hope for the future. That is why we're here today. And that's why we're going to be here every year, as long as it takes, to bring about our dream, our collective dream, of a world free of nuclear weapons. Thank you very much. by some fascinating people. For example, the former head of the armed forces, Lord Bramwell, has described the renewal of uh, the nuclear defence programme Trident as completely useless and virtually irrelevant. Now, it's wonderful he said those things, but he's got a different reason for saying it. He wants bigger, brighter, shinier, newer toys of mass destruction because he thinks Trident is now useless. Now we think that Trident is useless as well but for a completely different reason. We think that the hundred billion pounds it's going to cost to renew the system should be spent on, I don't know, resisting climate change, on education, on alleviating poverty, on dealing with all the ills of society rather than creating more ills. And it seems to me that it's time the government, it's time that everybody in Westminster understood that nuclear weapons are not the answer to any question. But a march with CND was the first march I ever went on. And it made me feel then just fantastic to be part of a large group of people who all felt the same way. And I have said to Kate more than once, are marches, are demonstrations any use anymore? But I think the feeling of solidarity and comradeship that you get from marches absolutely make them work worthwhile. So a big thank you to the campaign to nu for nuclear disarmament.
Everybody who's come in here, all you lot, all the speakers, the choir, the people with the flowers, everybody who's taken any part, the poets, poetry, etc. But I'd like also to thank, because these affairs don't happen by accident, someone puts out the press release, someone books the square, someone makes the arrangement, they're all the forgotten people. All part of us, a team, in coming together to celebrate this event and to renew our commitment to ending nuclear weapons in this world. Now it's picnic time. Thank you very much indeed.